Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord everybody. Praise Amen. The Lord. <laughs> Amen. Do we have any prayer requests tonight? Any prayer requests? Spoken prayer requests tonight? God bless you. Yes, Sister Kim House. Amen. Let's keep her in prayer. Amen. Sister Shirley. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Amen. For those of you at home who are watching, um, certainly throughout the broadcast, if someone should be placed on your heart you desire us to pray for, uh, do not hesitate to put their name in the comment section. And uh, we know that God is able to work and perform what He's going to do uh, the impossible in our lives. Amen. Because we trust Him. Father, tonight we treat you by your spirit. We thank you for being so good to us, so kind to us. We thank you, O God, for waking us up this morning, showing us all away. Thank you, O God, for being clothed in our right mind. We thank you, O God, for the opportunity we have to come into this sacred house to worship and to learn of you and to grow ever in your word. And we pray tonight that you would comfort our hearts, that you would illumination, revelation. Pray, O God, that you would anoint even the word that comes forth tonight, that minister to us, that we would be edified, encouraged, and empowered to do your will. We send special prayers to Sister Kim right now, God. You know what situation she's in. You know what she's facing, oh God. Let her know she is surrounded with love here at Bethesda, oh God. Cover her, oh God. Give her no peace, oh God, until she comes back into the house of safety, oh God. We pray, oh God, for her mind. We pray, oh God, for her strength. We pray, oh God, that you would be God in her life and remind her of her purpose, oh God. The great call that you have on her life. We give you honor. We pray for our seeds and saints. We pray for our young people. We pray, oh God, for families and for our singles and Pray, oh God, that you would help us even in this season of what we call this the season, oh God. Help us be reminded that it was your love that came, your blood that was shed abroad for our hearts, oh God. And help us, oh God, commit, oh God, to living uh, to your word and your standards. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 We begin each Bible class for a few passages of scripture. Uh, you know the drill by now. The book of John, chapter number 8. In verse uh, 30 through 32, as well as a couple passages that we have in the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, so join us over there. Again, for those who are watching us online, we say praise the Lord, apologies for our tardiness, and then we'll try to redeem the time tonight if possible. Amen. So we can get you out amen, in a good hour. Amen. St. John chapter number 8, verses 30 through 32. When you found it, we say amen. Amen. All right, lights, amen. amen. <laughs> Moments in John 8, verses 30 32, and then 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and chapter 3 for a couple passages there. We'll try one more time. If you're ready, say amen. 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 Here we go. <laughs> and as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let's go over to 2 Timothy. Chapter number two. Second um, uh, Timothy chapter two and verse number fifteen. And, and here we read of God's holy word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, <coughs> or even not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then over in the next chapter, chapter number three, verses sixteen and seventeen, <coughs> tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Again, we say praise the Lord to everybody. We thank the Lord again for his keeping power. And we're thank and praise God for our superintendent, Sister Kita. Yes. A wonderful job. Amen. for the year 2024. It's going to be a year of discipleship. A year of discipleship, intentional discipleship. Uh, using the 404G model um, of gathering, um, growing, um, and advancing the gospel, going. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm jacking up the, <laughs> the 4G thing that I had. Uh, let me make sure so you have it uh, uh, in its totality. But um, dealing with a theme of discipleship for the upcoming year, the Lord dropped on my spirit on plane on what He wants us to um, focus in on, hone in on, um, gathering and going um, and growing um, and, and going. And um, I think that's one of the 
the things that we're charged to do um, as believers is uh, uh, follow the model of discipleship. It's going to be a year that we're uncomfortable because next year is a year we're going to move with intentionality. It's going to be a year that we get in this community and we don't just talk it. Amen. A year that we roll up our sleeves and get to work going after our brothers and sisters. What we want to see saved. Amen. Uh, doing the work of encouraging uh, those and us growing in maturity in God and having a full understanding of what it means to fully be disciples. And so I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward uh, to the Lord challenging us uh, as we endeavor to see lives saved and relationships restored, um, allowing God to even allow us to grow in the areas of discipleship that we have a full understanding of what God's desire for us as believers are. Um, and most importantly, that we, amen, be the feet of Jesus literally and we get to work um, and that we don't just talk about uh, the things we want to see happen go out and get uncomfortable, amen, um, and fully be disciples as the Lord has instructed of us, amen. Um, so tonight I want to kind of continue the vein, in that vein of, uh, as a foreshadowing, um, last week I was to touch, uh, considering the time, and um, also just heightened with a lot that's going on in the, uh, the, the Judeo-Christian uh, community, a lot that's going on with other interpretations of what the gospel really is, uh, and feel that it's important for us to renew our understanding of what it is uh, the endeavor really to be disciples. Um, in order for us to fully carry out uh, the understanding of what it means for us to operate as disciples, it takes, I think, an awareness and uh, reintroduction, amen, to who the Lord is Himself. And we got a little bit of this in uh, Sunday school this past week, but uh, in order for us to be disciples, amen, the basis of discipleship is a byproduct of our understanding and awareness of the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Savior Jesus Christ, but also the character of God. We cannot uh, uh, be disciples and leave out what it means to understand that character and the way the fruit he is. Let's go to the book, amen, of uh, Exodus tonight. Exodus chapter 34. Understanding the basis of our discipleship start, amen, through the gospel, through us understanding that we serve a God who is holy and just, and righteous and good. If we're going to carry out, amen, the command to be like him, we got to know who he is. Amen. 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 If we're going to be like him and follow the model um, of his exampleship, uh, we got to understand his character. For we know the Lord to be holy, to be just, to be righteous, and to be good. Uh, Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7 tells us this, uh, as the Lord is ministering to Moses, um, as the Lord, amen, is shining forth, amen, uh, 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 his hinder parts up over Moses, uh, as he's giving him his commandments, and uh, as this face is shining upon, amen, uh, or Moses' face is lit up, amen, by seeing the proclamation of the word, amen. We read in verse number 6 and 7, Exodus 34, what? And the Lord passed before him. All right, Moses again, uh, the cleft of the rock. Uh, Moses again, amen, being presented, amen, uh, as he had previously requested to seek the face of God. I was told and could not see his face and live, amen. We now see God, amen, uh, shining upon him through his word. His face is lit now, amen, because of the Lord passing before him, amen, to declare and proclaim this, that the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, what? And abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for what? Thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, all right? Uh, and that will by no means clear what the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto a third and fourth generation. And so we see this, amen, model of understanding God. Amen, we understand that God in his totality is just and righteous, and he carries the weight, amen, of that from generation to generation. Amen. But God was able to forgive iniquity, amen, the transgressions of sin, amen, but by all means, amen, uh, uh, is a God of character, amen, merciful, long-suffering, that's who he is, all right? And he lays this out, Amen. To Moses as he hands him the expectation for the law. Amen. Let's go over to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus, chapter number 
onlardır. Leviticus chapter number 11. And verse number 44. This is the expectation he has of us who, amen, have a desire to follow him. He says what? For I, what? Am the Lord, you are God. Ye shall therefore, what? Sanctify yourselves. And what? Be ye holy. For what? I am holy. Neither shall ye, what? Defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you about the land of Egypt to be your God, and ye shall therefore what be holy, for I am holy. We cannot say we're disciples, followers of God, and say that there is no template or expectation for our living. Right. All right? He says, you are the ones who I handpicked out of sin. Egypt is a type of sin. Those Old Testament, so we feel, oh, it's not relevant. It's not relevant. Amen. Egypt, we see Egypt as a type, a type of the past, a type of prison, a type of bondage. The Lord has delivered us out of Egypt. And in doing so, amen, he has repositioned us that we would live a life of accountability. Remember, I am the Lord your God who pulled you up. Therefore, be holy for I am holy. Operated my character, follow my temple. We as disciples of God have to, amen, remember, amen, that we follow a model of holiness. For the Lord is holy. Do as I do. Mm -hmm. All right? No playing the gray, no playing, amen, what the sound light is, not playing what you think fits your model and what you think is acceptable unto God. Mm -hmm. Be ye holy, for I am holy. What does it mean to be holy, somebody? Separate. Separate? Anybody else? Trustworthy. What's that? Trust, trust me? Trustworthy. Trustworthy. Holy. Anybody else? Speak up. No wrong answer? Sanctify. Sanctify. Holy. Mm -hmm. Alright? Set apart. Set apart. Mm -hmm. Alright? <laughs> okay? Without blemish. Mm -hmm. Amen. To operate in a mode of perfection, nobility. Alright? Mm -hmm. uh, a sanctity, purity. Mm -hmm. Alright? The things that are holy, amen, are things that are consecrated, things that are set aside. I, the Lord, am pure. I, the Lord, amen, am the model, amen, of integrity. 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 Alright? Uh, there is no shadow of injustice in me. There is no shadow of contradiction in me. There is no shadow of filth in me. There is nothing in me that's contaminated. There's nothing in me that can be the source of something that's not righteous. All right? So he says, follow that model. All right? No more on your own. If you're going to say you're a disciple of me, amen, do as I do. All right? A couple more of these. Amen. Psalms 5. Psalms 5. And verse number 4. The psalm that we receive, amen, from, amen, David. She writes uh, to one of the musicians. I love them. She sometimes the, the subheadings of the text. Psalms 5 and verse number 4 tells us, For thou what? Art not a God. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure what? In wickedness. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Say it with your chest, all right? <laughs> all right. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. We can stop the Bible class right there. We can answer the, the, the error of the day of trying to, to wiggle out of what God's expectation is for us. David and his conscience understands that you are not a God that takes pleasure in me half-stepping. Right. You are not a God that takes pleasure in me getting by, by being almost integral. You are not a God who takes pleasure, all right, in, 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 in the curve, the curve, curve sanctification, grading on the curve. Oh, I used to love that in school. Anybody used to love when they graded on the curve? Yes. That means nobody was, <laughs> nobody was making a grade, and the class was so bad that they took the highest score and made that the standard, and everybody else got their grade based upon that. We do not serve a God like that. Y'all laughing, huh? Only by graduating from college. Thank God for a curve. Huh? <laughs> Calculus. <laughs> Some of those subject matters that were hard. 
thing. <laughs> and, and we used to, we used to sabotage. I used to tell them, don't be your best. You know, we used to tell them one student, all the games are doing good. We used to tell them, don't. <laughs> like, you know, like, hey, remember us. <laughs> bring, bring, bring the scale down. So by 54 out of 100, <laughs> compared to 54, hey, amen, on a 60 scale, it was a whole lot different than 5400 scale. But that's not the God we serve. You don't take pleasure in wickedness. Ooh. We don't hear that teaching anymore, right? right. right. Neither shall what evil dwell with thee. Oh, don't we love when people die? Oh, they got their wings. And <laughs> He's so holy that around him there is no air. There is no foolishness. Right. Around him, there is no gray area. There is no in-between. Thank God for God that's holy. Thank God yes. for God. And then you go to him and he's faithful and righteous and consistent in his holiness. Yes. He's compassionate toward us, but he's holy. I'm merciful toward you, and I'll give you a second chance, but I'm holy. Don't you, don't you mistake grace for me not being a God of character. And a God of principle and a God, amen, of holiness. Huh. All right, Psalms 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. Or I went up, I went back, back up. It was, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods yes. for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords what for what? His mercy endure forever. To him who alone, <laughs> all by himself, all by himself. alone, ah, the holiness of God is not got to be so lonely that no one will ever Ah, thank you, yes. Jesus. Yes. Teach thank it. you, Jesus. Teach it. Alone in his holiness. Alone in his brilliance. Mm -hmm. Alone. Ah. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Alone doth great wonders for his mercy go forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy go forever. To him that stretched the earth above the waters for his mercy and forever. Mm -hmm. To him, amen, that made great lights, for his mercy and forever. To the sun uh, to oh, rule Jesus. by day, and his mercy and forever. Yes. To what, the sun and the stars, the moon and the stars. Mm -hmm. All that, right? <laughs> I can keep going. The entire scripture is for his mercy and forever. Beautiful. All the way through and through. Give food to, the, uh, to, to all flesh. Redeem it from our enemies. Uh, Remember us in our lowest state. I love that verse. Verse number 23. Who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endured forever. He recognizes that you and I will never be able to measure up to his brilliance. Mm -hmm. And in that revelation, what does he do? Not only does he come, amen, to be a kingsman redeemer, not only does he come Amen. To shed his blood for you and I that we may receive atonement for our sins. He gives us what? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm tired of being all by myself. So I want to give you the power now to be joint heirs with me and to live a life of holiness and sanctification. Beautiful. You can't live holy without the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Yes. Don't get on your on your best day. Yes. <laughs> Can't do it. Can be upright. He's a good neighbor. Good, 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 good co-worker. Good buddy. Integral. All these things that people flaunt about moral integrity and character. Amen. Is undone without the Holy Ghost. Yes. He gives us his power on the inside of us. And that makes us disciples. So we follow. Amen. After his pattern of being holy, just, and righteous. Amen. Because these, again, encompass this gospel that we have. All right. He comes through. Amen. He provides, amen, us with atonement and sanctification. Amen. He allows us to be joint heirs. 
uh, with us, uh, with him, amen, and in doing so, he allows us to be in right standing, amen, with God through his sacrifice. Uh, book of Matthew chapter number five, real quickly, Matthew five. Matthew 5 and verse number 48. Thank God for the paper Bible tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's faster if I thank God. Amen. All to the paper Bible. What does the scripture tell us? Be what? Therefore what? Perfect. Perfect. Even even your father, it's perfect. So now we give to the Holy Ghost that will be bestowed upon us. We have been now moved into an arena, an area of perfection. That we would strive for perfection in God. So the standard has changed for the disciples. The model of living has changed for the disciples. Let's not be confused. We are in the day and age where loose living will, <laughs> will wipe this scripture out of the Bible. I know it's old school teaching tonight, but I just feel throwback anointing. Sister Nikita just set us up, all right? Because <laughs> we're living in the last day. And you can fall asleep in church thinking that it's okay for me to live any kind of way. Right. No, this word says what? Therefore what? Be therefore perfect. <laughs> Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Doesn't mean that we won't have trials and tribulations. Doesn't mean that we won't have obstacles. Doesn't mean that we won't fall short of the glory of God. But there is what? This is the true standard. Not the made up stuff. This is the true standard. Mm -hmm. Following the, perfect, the perfection of God and moving, amen, to a level of expectation in Him. The Word of God is rich, y'all. You're not hiding nothing. You're not hiding expectation. There's no coded language here. We don't have to be uh, uh, computer engineers to do all this the coding to try to break through what it is God wants for us. It's not complicated. It's not deep. There's an expectation He has for us that we as disciples, we got to follow the pattern. It's not about philosophy. It's not about feelings. It's not about personal convictions. It's not about what was in, what you're inheriting. Move and strive to perfection. Let's move to perfection as the Lord it has graced us to do. Amen. He comes, and now that we, amen, have the gift of the Holy Ghost, we are now able now to operate in a morality, amen, that sets us apart. It doesn't make us arrogant. There's a new expectation that comes with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, Catholic Church. <laughs> come on, Ten Hail Marys, and, 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 and you know, and it's, it's done. Come on now. Should there not be a new expectation with the Holy Ghost? Amen. We get the Holy Ghost and then we go back to living raggedy. No. We'll get no likes tonight. No. Amen. We'll get no, we'll get no shares tonight. We get the Holy Ghost and we go living like the Holy Ghost never come into our lives. Right. We got the Holy Ghost and, 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 and there is no change. Right. We're living in the last days. We all live this. This is the air that's being preached in this day. If you got a young preacher, amen, that's going to take you to the word of God. If we're going to be disciples, we got to level up. Slow clap. <laughs> 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 Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we must follow his example. Hebrews 4 and 15. Hebrews 4 and 15. Don't tell me we can't do it, y'all. Oh, I feel help in the house tonight. You better preach it. Ah, I feel help in the house tonight. Preach it. Don't tell me that we can't do it. Let's we gotta stop listening to the air of this day. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. We teaching holiness tonight. We're teaching sanctification tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're teaching true discipleship. You can never be a disciple if you've never worked the word of God to see what the expectation is. So you keep living a standard based upon somebody's proclivity and someone else's expectation of what God said. What does Hebrews 4.15 says? For we have not we have what? Not a high priest. A high priest in 
Now, I always struggle with the King James because it's like, normally when I see N, I think there's supposed to be like an A or an E word or something. <laughs> but nevertheless, we have not a high priest, all right, which cannot be touched, what? With the feeling of our infirmities. But was what? At all points, tempted, right? Like what? As we are. He's been there before. Come on. He's been there before. In all points means at all points. Hopefully the kids turn away. He's been it up at one o'clock in the morning. At all points. Amen. There's been something when I could have not been integral at all points. Think of your points in your flesh that you struggle with and see. He was tempted in all points. He did not get us. Come on. That's what the word says, right? Mm -hmm. As you and I were. But what I love about it says, but what? Yet without, yet without sin. sin. So it's in us to do even greater, right? Greater work shall he do. He has a higher expectation, amen, of us. That even though he went through his tribulations, even though he was, you know, he was pushed like me. There's, come on now, there's nothing new. Come on now. He was in the beginning. <laughs> He knew what the vice of the day would be before the vice of the day came. And he covered at all points before we even knew what this stuff was. Before there was an Instagram. Right. All points. Before there was a Facebook. Before there was television. Before there was what? The, what they used to call it? The, the, the devil's box. <laughs> the picture show. All that stuff to be like, you know? Before there was these proclivities. Before we could ever conjure it up, before it could even come to the mind of a Steve Jobs, before it could ever come to the hearts of a Spike Lee, before whatever it was, amen, he was tempted at all points, all points, which means he's covered even the things that haven't even come into creation in the fickle mind of man. Yeah. Ooh, you better preach. Preach Yet. it. Without sin. Yet. So we have a charge to be perfect like what? He is perfect. Our Heavenly Father is perfect. Right. We got to stop. And then I tell you this: we got to stop beating ourselves up, but we also got to stop being amen victims. Amen. <laughs> Teach it. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes in this flesh. Hallelujah! Praise God. We're going to fall short of the glory of God. But at the same time, as well, we cannot continue to act like we can just live any kind of way. Right. Right. Last day teaching. <laughs> ah, last day teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The model of discipleship. Yeah. The disciples of being followers of Him. Amen. The disciples, Amen. A different characteristic. That's why, Amen. Even when Peter was having his conviction in this moment, when Peter started cussing, there's no way you could be hanging around this guy. We know you, you stand, we know you, you don't know me. I remember seeing, right? Yeah. When he tried to try to talk himself out of a relationship, mm -hmm. then people know you saved. <laughs> then people know you go to church. Come on now. <laughs> then people, then people know. They know. They know. They know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So and, and, and he tried his best to try to squirm out of that identity. He tried to do his best to wiggle out of it. And, and he was caught on the carpet. Caught on the carpet. And so what he tried to do, he tried to indignify and undo, amen, by, by, by cussing. At the end of the day, he was what he was because of who he had been in fellowship with. Do, is there, does the world not have the right not to have an expectation of us if they know where we be every Sunday? Right. Amen. <laughs> Do they not have an expectation to come to you and, and expect something different if you say you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. We live in a day of blending. I'm going to take the best of God and the best of what I want to be and mix it like a, like a strawberry cranberry, like a, like a cranberry sprite concoction and match that as sanctification and holiness. I, the Lord, am holy. Praise the Lord. It's true anyhow. It's good. Hallelujah. It's true anyhow. So now that we're part of, now that we are disciples and we're saved and united to Christ, amen, we now have a personal relationship with God 
and a, a grace now that's given to us and a confidence that draws us closer. We disciples got to go closer. Yes. That's why I thank God for the next verse in Hebrews 16 that tells us that although he understood, he gets it. I get it. I get it. When you go to him, he, I get it. When you're in your struggle, I get it. When you're at your pain point, I get it. But he gives us this. The disciple is one that keeps pursuing. The disciple is not the one that quits. The disciple is here in verse number 16. Let us therefore what? Come boldly unto the throne of what? Of grace. Grace. The disciple, you have got to keep your pursuit. Ah, somebody write it to your own, to your own detriment. Write it to your own edification. Bring it in your book. Make it your, make your voice recorded. Amen. I've got to keep pursuing. Yes. I've got to continue. I've got to keep going to God. Even when I mess up, I recognize that he was in the same condition as me. As in all points was he tempted. But what he gives us is this. He gives us access. The veil is gone. Huh? He says, let us therefore what come boldly yes. unto the throne of grace. Yes. We don't come we don't have to come shy. We don't have to come timid. We don't have to come. That's not like me. Be taking 15 minutes to do an altar call. You better come boldly unto the throne of grace and get what you need. Amen. I'm concerned to be tonight. <laughs> you gotta learn to come boldly. Because you have a devil that's coming bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Anybody want to talk about how bold the devil is? You just going to give me this dream at 2 o'clock in the morning? You just going to bring this person back into my life? You just going to bring sin? You just going to just gonna make me think a thought? Right. You just going to make my tongue become unbridled? You just going to boldly come in and bring somebody that you know, amen, if they say the wrong thing, it'll pop off? Just as boldly as he sets his day up to discourage you from getting into the kingdom, he says, those of you that are my disciples, come boldly to the world. You keep pursuing boldly. Yeah, I'm coming to grace. Ain't no sense in coming with shameful. I need grace. Yeah. Right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I need grace. I don't know about this my time. I need grace. I need grace every moment of the day. Pastor, district elder, bishop, pope, we all need grace. Look at this I need grace. When I'm coming to God, I'm coming boldly. I'm not coming scared. I need grace. Ah, oh, I don't sin. God. I need grace that I can get back into right standing with him. He says, come boldly that you might want to obtain mercy. Somebody tell me what mercy is. Mercy is giving me what I know I deserve. <laughs> Not giving me what I know I deserve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for mercy. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace mm -hmm. that we might receive and obtain mercy mm -hmm. and find grace. What? To help what? In the time of need. Ah, thank you, Jesus. You know what the problem is? We've gotten so jaded in this day. Thank you, Sister Kira, for stirring this up. We've gotten so jaded in this day that we're no longer needy. Mm. Ah, we're no longer needy. We got all the answers. We got all the books. Come on now. We got we listen to all the podcasts. You got all the answers. So you might, I don't need to come to church. I'm saved because I listen to the meme. I'm saved because of my expression. I got a little bit of this. I got 10 minutes of this encouragement. I got my own relationship. It's not man-made. And so we stop being needy. Ah, thank you, Jesus. We got to get over this arrogancy. Right. We got to get over this pseudo-Christianism. We got to get over this stuff. When is the last time that you from your heart said, I'm desperate, I'm needy for grace, I'm needy for mercy. Mm -hmm. We got all the answers and we justify our living. Mm -hmm. So there's no longer a drive, a passion, a boldness that gets us to pursue and go the next grace, the next mile. It's in our time of need, we, we were resistant. In time of need, I need help, I want to ask for help. It's like taking a test in class, right? And we know the teacher will come by and show you the right answer. But you better sit there and struggle. You better take the F, then have someone give you the hint on how to get out. 
in the time of need. He says, I want you to come boldly. Just as boldly as the devil wants you to go to hell. Just as boldly as the devil wants you to trip and scour. Just as boldly as the enemy wants to come, amen, to rob your joy. He comes boldly. He don't come asking questions. He don't come, can I, can I mess with your finances? He don't come, he, he don't come, and hey, can I put a little discouragement in your marriage? That nigga was bold. We're going to fight before 9 o'clock in the morning. He's bold. to get. Come on now. Are we talking about the same devil? He's bold. He's bold to knock us off course. Huh? But God says even if we get sidetracked, even if there's something that comes, let us come boldly. He desires us to come boldly, not scared. I'm off. Preach, preach, preach. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about disciples. Disciples have to walk in a boldness, all right? Knowing that he's working in us and through us to make him like, like, just for us to be like him. Come on now. <laughs> we follow God. Amen. We follow God. We do our own thing. Twelve disciples with twelve different opinions. No. He's molding us to be like him. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter number eight. Hope this is blessing somebody tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number eight. God bless you to all my community. <laughs> Amen. This is what he says. Romans 8 and verse number 29. After he tells us all things work together for what? For good to them that love God. Not, not, not all. See, that's the thing. We stop there. Amen. All things work together. Amen. For good. No. They don't. You got to keep reading. <laughs> that's right. Romans 8 and 28. All things work together, amen, for good to them, what? That love, what? God. God and that are called. <laughs> to them, what? Or called, right? According. <laughs> According to his purpose. Yes. Why would you expect good if it's not for his purpose? Uh -huh. oh my God. You're preaching, Pastor. Come on now. Oh, you know, you know, it all works together. It all works together for the good. But you don't love God. You're not conscious of God. You're not thinking of God. You're not trying to live. No, there's something built in for us who are disciples who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, called according to his purpose. That means he sanctioned the misfortune. There is some misfortune we have. God ain't sanctioned it. You ain't going to find no good in it. You have to swallow it and <laughs> come boldly to the grace to ask God. Go to grace because I ask God to try me over again to get back in the race. Oh, we love to misconstrue that. But he says this, for he did, uh, uh, for whom he did, for another. He, what did he do? He also predestined him to be conformed, what? To the image of his son. Before the foundation of the world. Come on, y'all. Mm-hmm. We have been predestinated, all right? Predestined, amen, to be conformed to the image of his son. What is your image of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Tell me what your image of Jesus is, and, and then we can see how your life lines up. Jesus taking breaks. Jesus cutting corners. <laughs> Jesus got six hundred people that need help. <laughs> he got his feet up, taking a break. He worked this world, y'all. Y'all know one of my favorite scriptures. He worked it so much, and there ain't no room on earth as big as the ocean is. Couldn't tell you all that he did in his three and a half years. Virtue leaping him. Him, amen, putting all things and reconciling all things unto himself. He worked the works. He says, ah, for those of you, amen, who are called according to my, to my purpose, he says this for whom he did for no. Yes. He also predestinate, all right, to be conformed to the image of the Son. Who we know to be what? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Your image sometimes is what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Your image of what you think the standard is is the problem. You don't see a bloody Jesus. Come on, disciples. Come on, disciples. You don't see a Jesus of sacrifice. Ooh. 
You don't see a Jesus of giving. Preaching. Your image of Jesus. Ah, when he comes to the temple and sees rejection from the preachers. Come on, ministers. Come on now. Ah, when there's conflict even amongst those that he disciples, when he has to tell them the most intricate details associated with what it means to follow him. You got to drink my blood, eat of my body. They don't want to hear it. When you got governments, literally, you talk about our oppression. We don't, we don't like struggle. We don't like conflict. We don't like, we want cozy Jesus. Ooh, you want baby Jesus and the lamb and the shepherd singing sweetly at night. Huh? You like, amen, the image of Jesus that's almost like Santa Claus. Come on, I'm just, I'm teaching that night, y'all. That's the image that you have of him. And now they begin to recognize that he himself is one who has to, amen, he has to, amen, put his flesh on this objection. He predestinated us to be conformed to his image. But if your image of him is genuine, if you don't see him at all points being tempted, if you don't see him having to deny himself, if you don't see the personal sacrifice, if you don't see the, the anguish and the turmoil, if you if you never graduated your understanding of who he is, then you'll be an underdeveloped disciple. And that's what the problem with many of us are. We're underdeveloped disciples. We're fishes and loaves. One with the issue of blood. But you don't know being that being conformed to his image means that there are times when virtue leaves you and you're drained and you're exhausted. And people who are with you now need to see you walk on water. He will wish you that have faith and doubt you. And, ah, help me, help me, help me, help me. Beautiful. Ah. Beautiful. He says that we would be predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be what? The firstborn among many brethren. But he says this, moreover, who we did predestinate, then we also call. Yes. We're disciples without callings? Tell me what a calling is. We're teaching tonight, come on somebody, wake up, what's a calling? What's a calling? A summons. A summons. I just got one of the dirt. <laughs> I just got one. They found me. <laughs> I thought I had a break. <laughs> you've been summoned, you've been called to serve. What is a what is a calling? Come on, y'all, what's a calling? It's a burden. What do you mean we have disciples with no burden? God bless me. We have disciples with no call to action. Disciples with nothing to do. This is probably going over somebody's head tonight. Ah, I'm following Jesus with no plan of action. Following Jesus with no game plan, no strategy, no nothing. Then he also called, right? Hang on a second. Moreover, him that he be predestinated. The foundation of the world, then he also called. He put a purpose in them. Gave them marching work. Gave them crystallized instruction. We cannot be aimless disciples. Mm. We cannot be an aimless church. That's why, that's why I hide sometimes when we say these loose things. Because you can keep moving the target. But for some of us, you don't have, we don't even have a target. You know, we, I'm just trying to be saved. I'm just trying to come to church. What you got to actually now, yeah, there's, there's, there's now 
a growth that must take place in us. That we start fulfilling what God put me on this earth to do. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, why did you put breath in me? Who am I supposed to bless today? Who am I supposed to encourage? Who am I supposed to call today? Every day we got to get up, God, why am I here? That's what it means. Then he also called. He put purpose in us. We're not aimless disciples. We're not aimless believers. We're not aimless churchgoers. We're not just people that come here because we don't got nothing to do on Wednesday night. We come here to get the fuel. We come here to get the fire to go out and to accomplish that which he's called us to do. And you've been wrestling with it. <laughs> you've been wrestling with it. You need somebody to stir it up. We got cozy Christians because you're conformed to an image of him that just thinks, oh, he rests in his house. But Jesus was a goer. You talk about an itinerant minister. And you went down off Crenshaw. <laughs> she got it. <laughs> you talk about Jesus was booked. Jesus was busy. Jesus, and he wasn't people, you know, yeah, people booked him and called him to come to their house. But he made the mission work. He made the purpose. Thank you, Jesus. We've been called out before the foundation of the world and given his spirit to be holy like him, but also given a mandate. Then he also called. And whom he's given this call, what does he do? He justified. Why? What is the number one thing that keeps you back from doing what you do? You don't feel like you're justified to do it. Oh God, I'm, I'm helping myself tonight. Why do we have so many intrepid? Y'all don't got to say amen. I know it's hitting tonight. I know it's hitting tonight. I know it's hitting tonight. What's holding you back from doing what you're doing? You don't feel like you're sanctioned to do it. I don't have the degrees. I'm not bright enough. I'm not this. I'm not licensed. I'm not CC. I'm not PA this. I don't got a letter of appetite or alphabet. Amen. Behind endorsing what I do. He says, those who I predestinate. I call, I give them a burden. And in giving them a burden, I justify them for what I want them to do. Moses comes with his excuses. I can't talk. I, you know, I'm already stuttering. You know, I, I can't stand in front of people a few minutes before I, you know. I, he says, okay, but I still call you, so I'm going to send resources to you. That's what being a disciple is. When you have a mission and a game plan, God will send resources to help you accomplish what you have been purposed to do. You're supposed to start the business. Just go ahead, Carl. Just go work it. Just work it. Uh, you've been called to do it. Don't feel you're justified to do it. And God says, if you would know that I called you to do it, I'll send the help for you to do what you're supposed to do. Thank you. I was going there. <laughs> so because you don't feel like you're justified I don't have the right and the authority the Bible amen, uh, or, or, or the disciple stops going we stay in neutral mm -hmm. so he says I predestined you I called you and I gave you a burden okay and then I justified you all right and to whom he justified, then he also what? Glorified. Somebody tell me about glorification. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. No wrong answers tonight. Glorified. Somebody speak up. What does it mean to be glorified? Means to be exalted. Yeah, I'll probably lifted. Elevated. Mm -hmm. We got disciples that should be living up here. And we're down here. God's not going to share his glory. But he has the right to glorify. Yeah. Ah! You may think you're up here. You will never surpass the beauty of our... I'm teaching tonight, y'all. Teaching. I hope y'all getting this tonight. I hope y'all is getting this tonight. God is not going to share his glory. But he's going to elevate you. So that what you're called to do is visible. We got invisible disciples. Mm -hmm. Woo! Got a purpose and a mandate and a mission to do something. Nobody can see it because you're afraid you aren't justified to do it. 
And God says, those who I predestinate, <laughs> them I've called, I've given them a burden, I've justified what they've done, and those who I've justified, I elevate. Let me spend my time, it's time to level up. Level up, level up, level up. Live up, live up. Stop living. Ah, thank you, Jesus. You can't, you can't do the, 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 the Peter thing and, and, and go blame. You can't beat Peter and, and you, no. We see you coming a mile away. We know what's on your life. Unmistakable, undeniable. But you got excuse after excuse for why you can't do it. <laughs> God says, when I predestinated you, amen, I did it that you would be conformed to the image of me that even in my pain I'm elevated. <laughs> even in my struggle I'm elevated. Even when I'm going through. God says, you're living up here and you want to know, you, you'd rather deal with your adversity in pride. You don't have that right as a disciple. You got to go through on display because I've glorified you ah, that you would conform to the image of the Son and even Jesus, what they cannot take away from you, even when he was struggling, pierced in his side, gasping for that air, with a crown of thorns on his head, ah, as they have him tied up with to the cross. One thing you cannot take from him is his elevation. I'm not going to struggle down here, even when I'm going through. Some of y'all missed it. <laughs> One thing they cannot take from it in his kingship. God, even if I'm struggling, I'm going to struggle up here. You want to ball up. I feel the wind of God. You want to ball up and cry and tuck yourself in bed and be next to the bed down here in depression. God says, I want you to struggle on display so other people can see that you can go through with integrity and fulfill the purpose. And I've glorified you. I've exalted you that even in pain as a disciple, I come out. People can see, amen, you go through and you never clap back. Uh, you never, uh, you never, you never uh, step out of character. That's one thing you can't take away from. Yeah, I suffered, but I suffered on display. <laughs> I was exalted in my suffering. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the problem with a lot of us. We want to suffer and struggle in silence with no one to see us. Gee, in order for him to be God, the whole world has to see him on the hill. They got to see him. They got to see him bleeding. The world's got to see so that when he gets up, nobody can deny it. Everybody saw it. The sun saw it and refused to shine. <laughs> and it gets no higher than the sun. Which means that his suffering was exalted even above the sun. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I feel the wind of God, y'all. But we, we want to suffer and sit the up. So when we go through, we stop coming to church. When we go through, we become cantankerous. We take our breaks. God says, no, I want you to suffer, amen, in a place of glorification. We don't see such struggling as glorified. You know, we don't see that. You know? We don't see pain. As, as, as the glorification of God. Mm -hmm. huh? Because we don't necessarily like that image of God. Mm -hmm. We don't like that image of Jesus. Uh, let me just bring it down your street. right? We love, we love, we're going to use the Santa Claus example. We love jolly old Saint Nick. We love the image of him. But nobody wants to see that image of him going from house to house. Getting the reindeer lined up. Squeezing through that chimney with the dogs barking. I, I tried to use it. Okay, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. It's all right. It's all right. But no, we like that image. But it's but if you we know there's not a Santa Claus. But to, to, to visit all these homes and, and to deal with all these lists, that's a work. Here he is taking blow after blow for your sins and my sins and the sins that haven't even been sinned yet. And he has to do it on display. 
He doesn't get to back out of it because, ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. In his exaltation, they know that he is king of kings. He's exalted with this pain. He's exalted because there's purpose with it. Ah, oh, thank you. I do this to myself every single time, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he's working in us and through us to make us like him. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter number two. Hope this is blessing somebody. Amen. Hope it's making sense tonight. Philippians 2 and uh, chapter, chapter number 2 and verse number 12 and 13 tells us, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, that is in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is what? God which worketh in you both to what? To will and to do of what is good pleasure. God's behind it all. God's behind it all. Thank you, Jesus. That's probably a good place to stop. Amen. He's, Apostle Paul is in prison as he writes this. He's in prison. He's in lockdown. And he says, I take joy Amen. And understanding that not only will you, amen, do good while I'm in your presence, but when I'm away, that you'll continue to work. That's the context of what he's given. And more importantly, he says that you work out your own salvation with fear and trivial. There comes a point in the time of the disciple where you're not going to have the instructor with you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So work out your own salvation with fear and trivial. That fear, that reverence, that that sacred, amen, vocation that we have to strive to do the things of God. He says this, for it is God. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. It is God. It is the Lord, which worketh in you. He's working in you to will. <laughs> to give you the will, amen, to do his good pleasure. To do both. He's going to both to will it and to do it. Which means he's going to give you the purpose of your mind, amen, to pursue it and the tools to make it happen. I hope somebody come back. I hope, I hope somebody. It's, it's the Lord that's behind both of it. He gives you the desire. Thank you, Jesus. And then he sets you up, amen, uh, uh, to be able to perform his good pleasure. He gives you the appetite for the things of holiness. And then he gives you the tools to help you walk in the manifestation of holiness. <laughs> it's the Lord that puts the burden in your heart. He wills you to do it. And then he supports the things that you want to do. For his glory. Thank you, Jesus. And his what? Good pleasure. He's responsible for both. I don't take that. I would just say both. I would just preach both. Both. He gives you the resolve to want to get up and to, amen, and to be what God has ordained you to do. And then he gives you the tools to make it happen. Beautiful. Both. Both. To be a compassionate husband. He wills it in my heart. And then he gives me the tools to actually do it. You don't get that from, you don't get that all the time. Some of us frustrated at work because there's an expectation, but there's no resources. I just have to stop. <laughs> That's frustrating, right? I want a successful marriage, but I don't have help on the other side. You don't get that with God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He says, I'm going to put it in your heart to do it, and then I'm going to give you the tools to make it happen, because I'm the God of both. <laughs> both. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. There's a question. The microphone. Second Peter, chapter number one and verse three. Okay. All that you need to pass this you have the mic. Okay. All right. Second Peter, <laughs> chapter number one. Second Peter, okay. chapter number one, verse three. Verse three. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. 
through what? The knowledge of him that have called us to glory, what? And virtue, both. <laughs> Whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious, what? Promises that by these ye might be, what? Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and temperance patience, patience godliness, and godliness of every kindness, and to every kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you what? That you shall neither be what? Barren what? Nor unfruitful in what? The knowledge. God has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. Yes. And godliness. Yes. He has already given it to us. He's given it to us. Just supporting what you're saying. Absolutely. He's given it to us. Hallelujah. And 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 and, and what I love too about this is that, amen. All these things that He's given to us are considered exceeding and great precious promises that give us access to His divine nature. And this divine nature helps us escape the pollution of a corruptible world. And on top of that, this diligence, he gives us all these different attributes. And these attributes are knowledges. They're the source of knowledge base that gives us the mind of Christ. Be that you will neither be, if you employ these things, operate and enhance these things that have been bestowed upon us. So at a minimum, what you said, uh, back up to verse number three, pertaining to life and godliness, but in it, the base of that is diligence. Taking that diligence and adding now the virtue and the knowledge and the temperance and patience um, and godliness, right? And godliness for every kindness and every kindness charity. He says, if you do these things, not only will you not be barren and unfruitful, but it will be Barrenness and unfruitfulness in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just say that you won't be barren and even bare. Or unfruitful. He's saying this, these, these attributes, these things that are being added unto you will enhance your knowledge of me through Jesus Christ. Which helps us now have a better understanding of what we're to be conformed to. Our image of God shifts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> because in our suffering, we'll see temperance. In our suffering, we'll see a need to be patient. In our suffering, we'll see a need to mature, to be learned to exercise godliness. It's in our image and the conformity that we have to the image of Christ that allows us to see that even as I'm suffering, I need to be charitable and exercise brotherly kindness to others. And those are things you don't see when you hang on the cross. I'm going to be nice to somebody that's killed me. How am I going to forgive somebody that's dragged my character? How am I going to exercise a restraint and give grace to someone who didn't drag me and has taken me through the emotional spectrum that leads me to a place of hatred? But he says, if you add these things, invested in you, is a divine power and the ability to understand all things that pertain to life and godliness. Mm -hmm. And that godliness, that's the last attribute, <laughs> one of the last attributes we get. That godliness is worked in with the patience and temperance and knowledge and all those things. And then on top of that, you get even forward fruit, I like to call it, which is even the brotherly kindness, amen, in the cherry. So to your point, Sister Sylvia, beautiful point. Amen. All things have been bestowed upon us as believers. But our image of Christ has to change if we want to be effective disciples. May the word of God bless you tonight. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward the children of men. We thank you, O God, for being in our midst. We thank you, O God, for allowing your word to come alive tonight as we endeavor, O God, to embark upon, amen, this course discipleship, O oh God, that you're calling our ministry into, O oh God, that you would help us as we gather and grow, O oh God, that we would mature, O oh God, 
as we endeavor, O oh God, to get going, O oh God, in you. And I pray, O oh God, tonight that something would be said, O oh God, to lead our uh, 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 images of you to the side, O oh God, and that we, O oh God, would embrace uh, the full revelation of who you are and how you desire, O oh God, to give us the yes. truth to be like you, O oh God. We want to be true followers of you. Ah, thank you, Jesus, and be holy as you have required us to be holy, O oh God. We bless you and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a hand praise tonight in the sanctuary. Come on, we can be ready now. Give God a hand praise. We thank the Lord, amen, for keeping us one more time and blessing us one more time. And um, I'm excited about amen, even as we close this calendar and hear about the things that God is going to bestow upon us and enrich in us as we endeavor, amen, to fully execute, amen, all of the uh, uh, things that the Lord has purpose in our hearts to do as believers. Amen. I hope tonight something was shared with you. Amen. To encourage your faith. Amen. That we get up saying, what I got to do today. Amen. That uh, you put this breath in me to do. Thank you, Jesus. And we won't be aimless and purposeless uh, believers and disciples that we go after the things that God has uh, encouraged our hearts to do with this day. Amen. Again, remember our announcements. We're looking forward to God. Blessing y'all to that. I want y'all to bring somebody with you Sunday. We want to have some church on Sunday. Amen. Call it Christmas Jubilee, Christmas, one day revival, whatever you want to call. Amen. Get you something you can run with. Amen. Something you can jump around in or something comfortable. Amen. As we hear the word of God, we're honored to have with us. Amen. This upcoming Sunday, Evangelist Vandalin Kennedy. And she's a dynamic woman of God from Queens, New York. is going to be with us, a co laborer in youth ministry. A phenomenal woman of God. I can't wait to introduce you all to her. Amen. I'm looking forward to hearing, amen, the word of God, amen, as it comes forth. But we want to be blessed, amen. We're making, amen, uh, 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 preparations, amen. We're supposed to be seeing what the trial run is going to be on this upcoming week as we get ready to start the Crenshaw construction project. Then y'all see the barricades and stuff coming off the doolin. So as you can see, it's, it's going to get intense here, but we've got a plan. We're looking forward to God blessing us and being our midst. So pull up, even those of you at home. Don't sit this one out. Come to church and be with us here in the sanctuary on Sunday. I promise we will have a blessed time. I'm looking forward, amen, to what God has to do and how God is going to endeavor, amen, to bless us. I thank God, amen. My good friend of Quentin is in the back. Wave your hand, sir, amen. He's going to be helping us out, amen, uh, with our transportation, amen, as we uh, uh, try to go back and forth. Um, and, and help people we then get to and fro from Kirchhoff, they need a ride and have you. So God is sending help. He's sending support, helping us maneuver this strategic time. And I'm believing that God is going to continue to favor us as a church family. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Anybody will be saved tonight. I don't want to, amen, just, I see you, I see you. just want to make sure. Amen. God bless you. Um, also, I want to thank and praise God, amen, for um, um, uh, Keith, amen, sister, uh, evangelist Terry's grandson in our prayer. I got the Holy Ghost, amen. A couple of so let's keep him in our prayers, amen. Uh, God will continue to work in his life and I'll see him again and get a chance to connect with him, amen. And uh, again, um, upcoming as well, the toy drive, Tracy, amen. Uh, bring your toys, bring your toys. Everybody bring toys, amen, if you can. Let's be a blessing to our young people. Let's be a blessing to the show, amen. This season is not about that, but we also want to be a blessing to those that our misfortune. God bless you, guys. I know, though, though, I think this Sunday will still be good. It'll be good. It'll be good this oh, Sunday, yeah. But so, they come up, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. If you have any questions, you definitely can talk to Tristina. Amen. And get more information about them. We're excited about what God is doing here for the best. Amen. We're giving tonight. We're getting out of here. Amen. We're going to call upon the officials to come at this time. Amen. If anybody has a credit card and we want to give it tonight, my credit card, just wave at us. Amen. We'll get the credit card machine out. Amen. If you want to be an envelope, we'll be a blessing to the kingdom. You can't. Um, we got Cash App, Zelle, PayPal. Uh, the information is on the on the. Uh... It's not tonight. I can't put it on. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but if you have a if you have the card here, you can dial something. Amen. Uh, but that's the Temple LA. It meant for Cash App and our Zelle, which is our email address, btc at att.net. Amen. You can be a blessing to us. Amen. Um, here in the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Let's stand to be dismissed tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, 
Again, we thank you for all your manifold blessings toward us, your goodness and your mercy. Amen. Equip us and enable us to do your will, O God. We thank you for your divine favor in this season. Bless our homes. Bless our endeavors, O God. Help us to be fruitful in this day and we live a life pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bless you all. Jesus' name. Hug somebody. Love somebody.